I, I, I'm bringing on a coach today. I want to introduce her and she's going to talk about what she does after going to a live event and what she's going to immediately, immediately do after this year's summit, because it was packed, packed, packed with information. And sometimes you get overwhelmed and you do nothing. And sometimes you do a lot in the first week and then it fizzles out. So how do you keep that momentum going? Our coach today is a superstar diamond coach. She has been an elite coach six times. She is now part of our legacy club, which used to be called a million uh, club. Uh, and that is because over the years that she's been coaches, she has accumulated over a million dollars in earnings. We are so proud of her. In 2014, she was one of our top 10 coaches. She's from Tarpon, Tarpon, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Brittany Leggett Schumard. Hi, you guys. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I got through it. Brittany, how, long, how long have you been coaching? I think I have it here. You came in 2013. Yeah, six and a half years, basically. Six and a half years. So you have worked this business. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> worked it. And um, I would like it if you, uh, you haven't been on this call in a while. Yeah. So I would like it if you um, shared with everybody on this call um, how you became a coach. Okay, sure. So before I became a coach, I was working as a nurse medical surgical unit for all of our medical people. And at the time, my husband was in training to become a Navy SEAL in Coronado, California. Um, and in his career, he's gone about, you know, 85% of the year, roughly. So at this time, we were newlyweds, and I left everything I knew in Florida and moved to San Diego um, as his new wife, right? And at this time in San Diego, I was just really tired of being uncomfortable with my weight, disappointed kind of in my lack of follow through to to figure out a new um, sort of routine for myself in San Diego. I, I felt like a quitter through and through. And so I, I bought P90X from an infomercial in 2010. I attempted the program and quit it two times um, on my own. And then I just kind of shoved it in my closet out of sight. And then on January 1st, it was before I was a coach, but January 1st, 2013 is like my new year's resolution. Three years later, I decided I'd attempt the program again for the third time. And about a week into that program, P90X, my wedding photographers posted a, a, a picture of a couple that they had just um, done a session with um, on their Facebook page. And so I just went to that, per that bride's Facebook page just to say congratulations and say what a beautiful picture. And randomly I saw on her page that she had just completed P90X. So this is my now coach Lindsay Matway. I reached out to her. Um, it turned out she was a coach. I had no idea that this was a business. And then she invited me to join her January challenge group. Um, and it was kind of history from there. But in the background, while working as a nurse, I was kind of racking my brain trying to figure out what could I do in the future to be home with my future family while my husband honored and fulfilled his commitment to the military. You know, de deployments being a part of that. But I, I still wanted to contribute to my, my family's income and debt payoff. Um, I had no idea what was to come in our family's infertility journey and the costs associated with that, but I knew that it would be difficult for me to work as a traditional nurse during a deployment cycle. So I was tired of being stuck in you know, a 12 hour shift as a nurse when my husband had this random surprise day off. It was already difficult to see each other. And so within that first week of our challenge group, I approached my coach. I asked her, what was coaching all about? I did my research. I saw the opportunity. I love the idea of getting a discount. And I also knew that this was going to be something that was worth my effort. I knew I knew that I had a heart to help people and I was willing to work hard. Plus I was already seeing the results that I wanted with P90X at home that I'd never seen before. So I wanted to pass that on to people and I wanted to help hold myself accountable to my own goals. I knew that I would not quit if even just one person was looking to me for support. So anyways, yes, mid January, 2013, I was all in as beach run coach. All right. So uh, today's topic is perfectly timed. We just got back from summit. And how many summits have you been to? This is my seventh summit. Okay. So you still re-engage every single year. Did you sign up for 2020? I did already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and let everybody know what you're doing with your plan? 
Okay, so like I said, you guys, this was my seventh summit, right? And I know very well, even now as a seasoned coach, I know very well how it feels to be overwhelmed with information after summit. You know, I know what it's like to come home to the busyness of real life and feeling kind of like too full of info to know where to start. So my first year at summit in 2013, I'd been a coach for just shy of six months and I made a mistake. I came back not knowing what to do first. So you might be feeling that way if you're kind of in my shoes that first year, you don't really know what to do. So what I did is I just decided to wing it. Um, and I felt even more overwhelmed. Plus I felt very unorganized. Um, and then all those feelings kind of led to me feeling like I just kind of missed the boat. You know, I just kind of like let that go and didn't know how to implement. So my second summit in 2014, I learned a big lesson there. You know, I learned to focus less on how I was feeling inundated with all this info. And I wanted to focus more on how I was going to make an immediate plan of action after summit. So this is when the info and ideas are the freshest um, and the timing is pretty important. So I know it's busy. I know you probably came home. Like I came home to a toddler that needed different things and the regular life stuff. So I know that stuff doesn't slow down, but it's really crucial and critical for you to implement this stuff now when things are fresh and new. And you guys remember, um, if you were there at Summit, remember what Rachel Hollis shared on Friday, you know, people hesitate because there's so much to do. You don't know where to start. And I think this is really going to help you solve that problem. Okay. So I've got a couple like visual resources that I'm going to share, but I'll also post them in the Beachbody Champions page. Um, after our call today so you can have an actual copy. So these are my top tips for making that plan immediately after Summit. And you guys, this can also be done for those of you who did not attend Summit Live. You just gotta do your prep work, get in your coach office and learn about what was announced, okay? So the first thing I want to encourage you guys to do is to make a master list, okay? So you're gonna today, or maybe you already did it on the plane, but this is essentially, a hybrid list of changes I want to make to my personal business um, or, you know, just things I want to implement, just like the ideas that I have in my head, I need to get down on paper. So, for example, an idea I heard about running a challenge group differently or a tweak I want to make to my invitation process or storytelling, or maybe it was simply a conversation you have with somebody in line at the core that really stood out to you. So this might be training content that you want to pass on to your team, the new products that are coming out, the programs, the resources, all the announcements that I'll need to work into my personal brand to share on social media. So it's essentially a brain dump. Okay. So again, it might be specifics like collagen boost or the apparel line. It might, you might want to to start talking about you know uh, the promo codes with your team you're going to probably focus on the mm100 customer launch that starts tomorrow so all the things that are in your brain you just need to get them out on paper um, so that you can start to kind of dissect it so again for me i start this on the plane and then it's usually like two days after i'll take my notebook or the digital notes i took from summit and pull out the action items make that master list and prioritize them, you guys, based on the dates or the urgency, right? So for example, we don't need to be as focused on some of the awesome things coming up like Peppermint Mocha Shakeology or the new plant-based beach bar yet. We will eventually, but not right the second because they're not launching yet for a few months. So you're kind of going to put a pin in that and put that on your calendar in a month or two. But prioritize um, what you are focused on based on the release timing. Okay. So the next thing, so first we're making this master list. Okay. It's breaking down all the things so that you can get it organized. You can get it prioritized. Okay. So the next thing I want you to do is create a calendar. And I wouldn't have typed this up if this was just for me. So don't feel like you have to make it super pretty. I, um, I think that it, uh, just scratching it on a, you know, a paper, pen and paper is totally fine, but you want to create some kind of like organized system. So for me, I like to print off about two months. You can do two or three months um, worth of blank calendars. Or you can just Google this, but I'm going to share some resources in the champions page. Okay. So then you're going to plug in specifics. Okay. So um, I started, this is my actual one that I'm going to do, right? So I am going to share collagen today and I'm going to talk about MM100. You know, you see on the 14, 15, 16, it's making my master list post summit, right? And then you can kind of see that I've sprinkled in items from my master to-do list onto my calendar, okay? So again, I take this master list and I organize it so that I know what to focus on each week. 
This calendar really helps me to organize when I can commit to diving back into my summit highlights without feeling like I have to do it all at one time. So um, this is going to help me stay organized and help me implement them to make them my own, right? So you might want to host, let's say you have a team that you're partnering with or a team that you're leading. You may want to host a mini training, um, a mini training group for your coaches when you um, reteach all that you learn from your favorite session. You'll put that on your calendar. You might want to plan like a special team Zoom to review specific topics or announcements that were shared. Put it on the calendar. Okay, so I've always found that video is the best delivery method post-summit because it really translates your excitement. So if you're trying to bring information to your team, try to do it on video versus just a written post because it's going to translate a little bit better. But this calendar, you guys, is what's going to really help you, and it really helps me, to keep my momentum going even after the dust settles after Summit because I'm not overwhelmed by all the information at one time because I know and trust that all the important highlights that I brainstormed are on this calendar at some point so I can trust that it's going to have its own day for me to focus on it so I can be present and focus on the, the thing that is for each day, if that's making sense. Okay, so the calendar is really important and you can also just do it in your normal planner if that works for you. Doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be fancy. It's just to give you a guide of how to basically focus on the highlights each and every day. Okay, so the third tip that I have. So first tip was to make a master list. Second tip was to print out a blank calendar and start plugging in your specifics. Okay, so the, the third tip that I have for you is to plan for project time. Now, this is super important and something I think is missed a lot, right? So one to two times a week, I want you guys to plan for project time. Um, and this just needs to happen for a few weeks post-summit. But this is where I went wrong in attending my first summit, right? Like I said in the, in the beginning of our call, life and normal business responsibilities do not necessarily slow down for you to organize your thoughts and plans post-summit. Vital behaviors are still a priority in your business, right? So many times the new things that I want to implement require me to hit pause on the normal day-to-day -day responsibilities so that I can have an hour here or there to really dive into the changes that I wanna make. That's your project time, that hour or two so that you can think, pause, and really implement the changes that you want, okay? So do it right by giving yourself the time on your actual calendar for project time and planning. For me, project time is usually twice a week for at about noon because that's when I can bet my child will probably be napping, right? So do what works for you. Maybe it's late night, maybe it's early morning, but project time is gonna allow you to pause and breathe, okay? So this might be a time for you to, your project time might be a time for you to maybe re, you know update a template that you've been using in your challenge group or redo your cover photo or take a few extra photos for your content for the week. Um, maybe you're gonna revamp a system that you've been using for your new coaches. Anything that's gonna require a little bit more time to rethink or reorganize needs to be given project time. So stay consistent with your innovation here, but also remember, you can repurpose what's already working. Project time doesn't necessarily mean you need to redo all the things. It just means it's, you're giving yourself a second to organize it, to think about it, and to implement the change, okay? So, and then the last tip I have, number four, is to remind us all that it's okay to go before you know everything, right? It's okay to go before you know everything. Remember, it's a lot harder to steer a car that isn't in motion. So if you simply get started, you're going to surprise yourself. For example, if you want to make some changes to the way that you invite to your team, but you feel nervous about how to do that, schedule your project time, put it on your calendar, pull out your summit notes from those convert, those workshops that you attended um, that, that had to do with team building and inviting to your team, pull out those notes and give yourself a minute to think about it, to think about what you're doing, to think about how you'd like to change it. Because you went for it and you scheduled yourself some of that focused time, you're going to be able to make those adjustments that are needed to improve. So same concept when we're planning things for our teams, put it on the calendar. Maybe you want to do a Zoom, you know, with your team, you know, maybe half of your team wasn't able to attend live or, or maybe they were, and you just want to brainstorm together, just put it on the calendar, right? When you put it on the calendar, like for example, I have one um, connecting with your audience and storytelling audit. It's going to be a team Zoom, right? Once I put it on the calendar, I guarantee you, 
when it's scheduled, you're more likely to discipline your business time so that you have the chance to review that info from Summit before you bring it to your team, right? To teach or to brainstorm. So don't stress about having it all figured out. Just go for it. So, you know, having a plan like this is really, really, really going to help you take a big, deep breath and confidently work your business proactively off the heels of summit, right? You don't have to hesitate because there's too much to do. If you do the work now over the next, you know, two or three days to create your master list, to plug the things in over the count on a calendar for, you know, about two months or so is what I suggest. You're going to feel confident because you've got a game plan, right? You're not going to feel overwhelmed because you've got it already planned. So you're going to be proactive. And another thing is like using pictures from summit and live workouts is definitely going to help you prolong the excitement and build on that momentum that Summit builds, right? So you'll see one of my project times is to create um, create some Instagram story templates using Summit pictures, right? It's just to kind of prolong that that face to face community, that excitement that you shared over the weekend, um, and then use those IG story templates for a couple days or weeks to then invite to your team or to invite to the Super Weekend Open House that's coming up. Right, so um, speaking of that, another way to extend or keep the momentum going after Summit is to keep attending live events, like our Super Weekend Open House that's coming up next weekend, right? So all of those things are going to help sort of um, bridge the gap between event to event to keep that excitement going. And don't forget, you can make a rough draft calendar plan like this every month or every quarter. It doesn't have to be just Summit. And it doesn't have to be locked and loaded in permanent ink. The goal is to get your ideas organized in a realistic way for your lifestyle so that you can really accomplish all that you're capable of and limit that paralyzing feeling that comes when you're feeling overwhelmed. So you guys, to recap, um, this is my seventh summit and I made some big mistakes my first one, but since then I've implemented this system and I promise you it's going to make you feel confident. It's going to make you feel organized and it's going to make you feel like you can really implement all the things that you learn. So make that master list. It's a brain dump. All the things that you might want to change or edit or implement in your business or the things that are coming up um, in our, in our network, right? Make that master list then organize them um, on a blank calendar. So that you've got specific tasks to kind of conquer and pay attention to every single day. Don't forget to schedule in project time. I would suggest one to two times a week for the next few weeks post summit so that you've got the time to stop, think, and kind of review the processes that you're trying to sort of update. And then the last one is just a reminder that it's okay to go before you know everything. It's You don't have to know everything before you put it on the calendar. It's going to help you stay disciplined um, with your business time to get ready for that thing, right? So don't be afraid um, to plan things just because you don't know it all, okay? So that's all I have, Sandy, for my specific tips for our post-summit plan. You know, I wrote down on a piece of paper, dr people who are dreamers, they have big dreams. It's very sexy to have this dream, but people who are planners are very smart yeah. because nobody knows what your dream is. I mean, you, ha you have to put a plan in action in order to make it happen. So um, with that, I'd like to ask you the final question, which is about personal fulfillment and how rewarding coaching has been for you thus far. I mean, very rewarding. So I'm approaching my seventh year in January. So we're at that six year mark, right? So I've gone through the highs, the lows, just the consistency of working hard. But for me, hands down, the, the blessing that this business has given us is just personal choice and family freedom. So for those of you who don't really know my story, I'll do it really, really, really quick. But, you know, I, uh, my family didn't have to go into debt when we pursued multiple infertility treatments and IVF to start a family. So that's a specific one. You know, my husband retired from special forces um, in the Navy nine years early to now be able to pursue his next passions. Um, I don't have to choose between having quality son time with my son versus, you know, using my gifts and passions to help people. I get to do both. Um, you know, when I became a coach, it felt like I had very little say in my own life. I mean, my husband was gone 260 plus days a year, every year, whether he was deployed or not. Um, and I wanted to create a lifestyle that gave us more choice. Um, I wanted to work hard for what I believed in, but I didn't want to have to sacrifice uh, time with my family in order to do that. I wanted to create financial freedom um, in a purposeful 
but also flexible way. I didn't want to be tied to a desk or, or, a, or a nine to five or a, you know, in our case, six to seven or as in the nursing field, it's a lot longer hours. You know, I didn't want to be tied to that. I didn't know. Um, I did not know how many lifelong friendships that would develop along the way within my team and across um, our network. And I'm forever grateful for the opportunity to, to build a business partnering with Beachbody because our life is forever changed for sure. But personal choice and family freedom are the two biggest ones. Thank you so much, Brittany. And I just want to say that at Summit, you were amazing. So many people have commented on what an incredible speaker you are. And we're going to post some of your examples on this page, right? So yes, you can that. So yes, either, either in the comments, which I'm not sure if I can on the live, but if not in the comments, in the Beachbody Champions page for sure. Yes. Yes, yes, for sure. So thank you so much. And um, uh, before I go, I'd like to just share a, an affirmation. So let me um, get that with me. I love this go before you know, though. I just wanted to say that to you also, because before we all go for summit, we always get a, an email that says, you know, what to know before you go. That's kind of like all the things that you need to know before you go. But the way that she flipped it was just go even before you know everything. I just, I love it, love it, love it. Oh, okay. Here's the affirmation. I wrote it down actually from, uh, from Rachel Hollis. And it was, I'll just show it to everybody here. Let's see if you can all see that. You are capable of anything you set your mind, but you need to set your mind to it and go all in. You know, so much of this coaching business is about mindset. Everybody is looking at this call as either a make or break. They're looking at coaching, at the coach summit as make or break. If you go through life like, like that extreme, this is either going to give me the sign that I needed to do this business, or I'm going to walk away from it. That's not what this is about. Remember, it's never been about the money. It's never been about, you know, what other successful people are doing. It's about you. It's about your priorities and what your mindset is about. And so if you have a dream, Start planning to make that dream happen because no one knows what your dreams are. Nobody but you. Nobody's going to help you with your dreams but you. So it is up to you. Like I said, you are capable of anything if you set your mind to it. But if you don't set your mind to it and you don't go all in, nothing's going to change. That is your wake up call for today. I'm done. I think I'm going to go take a little tiny nap. I'll see you all here next week. Have a great day, everybody. We've got a lot of exciting stuff happening. So I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.